Today, we got an old Bronx story. Two decades ago, the area where Southern Boulevard meets Boston Road was a drug-ridden area. With drugs, most times comes violence. Today, you might hear that this area is harbored by the Vathos. In the 2000s, it was Doe Avenue. True or not, that what the streets say. 174th, 173rd and Boston Road is just a bike ride away from Bronx River. The area is harbored by two schools as well. The train station, where one could catch the 2 and the 5 train, separates the in-between blocks which we will talk about in this story. So, let's jump into it. In the early to mid-1990s, Maldonado, Padilla and Guerrero were members of a crew that ran a retail crack cocaine spot on Boston Road between 173rd and 174th Street in the Bronx. Ramon Flores led the Solid Gold organization with a close group of associates, including his brothers, Omar and Leonardo. The crew called itself Solid Gold, which was a reference to the gold caps the crew used on their crack vials. The organization began in 1992, when Ramon and Jimmy Fellas staked out the territory on Boston Road. Initial sales were slow. However, following Fellas's arrest in 1993, the crew obtained the assistance of Sedeno, who instructed the crew on a better way to cook the crack using rum and ammonia. Business boomed, and Solid Gold was making between $12,000 to $15,000 per day. At its peak, the Boston Road spot sold approximately a kilogram of crack cocaine a week. Solid Gold employed managers who ran the day-to-day -day drug business, stash house workers who bagged up the crack in individual packets and bundles, so it could be sold to customers and pitchers who conducted the actual sales of crack cocaine at the drug spot. Guerrero worked steadily for approximately two years as a manager for Solid Gold. Padilla worked off and on at the drug spot for a number of years, primarily as a manager. Since he was formerly familiar with the New York metropolitan area, he also acted as a driver for Ramon Flores. As for Maldonado, he worked for Solid Gold for a shorter period of time as a pitcher and sometimes manager. During the course of its existence, Solid Gold maintained a number of stash houses which members used to store crack cocaine and numerous firearms. Guerrero's apartment, which was in a building directly across the street from the spot used to conduct the drug sales, was used to store firearms. Multiple witnesses testified that guns were kept in a bag at the bottom of one of Guerrero's closets. The guns included 9mm semi-automatics, 357 revolvers and Tech 9s. Bulletproof vests and ammunition were also kept in Guerrero's apartment. The firearms were used by various members of Solid Gold, including Guerrero, Padilla, Maldonado and the Flores brothers, to intimidate, threaten and murder Solid Gold's drug rivals. The evidence established several shootings, including Leonardo's 1993 shooting at drug-selling competitors on Solid Gold's territory, the January 1994 murder of Fellas, two different rooftop shootings, the double murder of Ortega and Garrido in September 1994, the murder of Overman and non-fatal shooting of Wade in October 1994, and the murder of Diaz and non-fatal shooting of Rodriguez in December 1994. Jimmy Felix, a.k.a. Jimmy Arias, was another player who worked closely with the Solid Gold crew. In 1993, Jimmy went to jail for a gun charge. However, when he came home, he made it known that he wanted his spot back, which he previously worked with Flores. Flores and other members of Solid Gold, including Leonardo and Guerrero, agreed that Fellas should be killed so that they could continue to control the spot. Ramon, Leonardo and another member of Solid Gold arranged for a gunman by the name of Fila to commit the murder. They agreed to pay the hired assassin and provided him with a 357 firearm to do it. On January 11, 1994, Fellas was gunned down in front of 1685 Boston Road. He was shot multiple times near the bodega. Although they didn't commit the murder personally, both Flores and Guerrero were present in the immediate vicinity of the homicide and ran from the scene when shots were fired. After the murder, Guerrero, armed with a gun, pretended that he was going to exact revenge on the persons responsible for Fellas's death in order to deflect suspicion away from Solid Gold and to please Fellas's brother. After the murder, members of Solid Gold, including Guerrero and Flores, attended the wake for Fellas. Guerrero was armed with a gun because the crew believed they might be in danger of retaliation from Fellas's family and associates. On September 3, 1994, Ortega, a crack dealer, and his friend, Garrido, were shot as they stood near a gas station on Minford Place and 173rd Street in the Bronx, within 100 feet of Solid Gold's drug spot. Both Ortega and Garrido died as a result of their gunshot wounds. 
the solid gold crew disfavored Ortega, who was selling crack cocaine in close proximity to the solid gold spot and who was directly competing with solid gold for customers. Additionally, Ortega had sold crack of an inferior quality using solid gold's packaging, thereby hurting solid gold's brand. As a result, members of the solid gold crew had several confrontations with Ortega. Solid Gold also had a dispute with Overman, aka Boo, who had operated the Solid Gold drug spot before Solid Gold's predecessor, Fellas. Since being released from jail, just like Fellas, Overman had made it clear that he wanted the drug spot back for himself and his partner, Wade. At one point, Solid Gold members, Ramon, Leonardo and Guerrero, armed themselves with guns from Guerrero's apartment and prepared to shoot at Overman and Wade from the rooftop of 1669 Boston Road. Guerrero sent a bag of guns, which were stored in his apartment at 1693 Boston Road, to the roof, and they waited in anticipation of the shooting. Before the shooting could occur, however, Solid Gold members believed that police were on the block, discarded the guns, and dispersed. On another occasion, Guerrero, who was on duty as a manager that day, left to attend to the spot shortly before the Flores brothers shot at Wade as he walked below in the street. The attempt to shoot Wade was unsuccessful as he managed to evade the gunfire and get away. On the day Ortega would be killed, September 3, 1994, Overman assaulted one of the Solid Gold workers. Members of Solid Gold, including Padilla, Ramon, Leonardo and Guerrero, went to the vicinity of Ho Avenue and 173rd Street in search of Overman, whom they intended to kill. The crew planned to have Padilla drive and Guerrero shoot Overman from the vehicle. Guerrero, armed with a gun, leaned out the window of a white van and pointed the gun at African-American males, whom he believed to be Overman and his associates. They were the wrong guys, so Guerrero didn't shoot. When the crew was unable to find Overman, however, they returned to Boston Road. Once there, the crew decided that, since they were armed and prepared, they might as well take the opportunity to kill Ortega. In preparation for the anticipated shooting of Overman, Guerrero had armed himself earlier that day with a 9mm firearm, which he had retrieved from his apartment on Boston Road. Guerrero, his face obscured by the hood of his sweatshirt, walked to the corner of 173rd Street in Minford Place and shot Ortega in the head at close range. Guerrero then shot Garrido, who had been standing with Ortega, in the back. Guerrero then got into a white van that was waiting for him down the block. Padilla, who was in the driver's seat, drove a few blocks away, where Padilla and Guerrero regrouped with Ramon and Leonardo, who were waiting there in Leonardo's burgundy car. Guerrero got in the burgundy car and announced that, I killed him. Leonardo then drove away. Ortega, who sustained three gunshot wounds, died on the spot. Garrido, who sustained a single gunshot wound to the back, died some hours later at a hospital in the Bronx. A couple of weeks after the murders of Ortega and Garrido, the crew renewed its efforts to kill Overman and his partner, Wade. Padilla recruited Maldonado to commit the murder. On the morning of the murder, October 9, 1994, Ramon, Padilla and Maldonado met at the apartment of Ramon's girlfriend, which was a short distance from the spot on Southern Boulevard where Overman regularly sold marijuana. Maldonado was wearing a sweatshirt with a hood tied tightly around his face. Maldonado had been given a 357 caliber revolver by members of Solid Gold. After confirming that Overman was at his spot on Southern Boulevard, Maldonado, Padilla and Ramon left the apartment, and Maldonado got on a dirt bike and proceeded to Overman's drug spot. Maldonado later described to the crew members how he murdered Overman and shot Wade. According to Maldonado, the shot to Overman's head was so powerful that Overman's brain splattered in the street. Overman was killed, but Wade survived. On October 12, 1994, Leonardo was arrested and ultimately charged with the murders of Ortega, Garrido and Overman. Leonardo was convicted based almost exclusively on the testimony of three eyewitnesses to the murders, all of whom testified that they saw Leonardo shoot the victims at point-blank range. Ultimately, the two living eyewitnesses recanted their testimony to federal agents who were reinvestigating the murders. One of the living eyewitnesses, Omar Camacho, who was 16 years old at the time Ortega and Lavino were murdered, had initially claimed and testified at the state trial that he saw the shooting, saw the shooter's face, and knew who the shooter was. Camacho later admitted that he never saw a shooter at all, and had made up the version of events he later told to the police at the urging of his stepfather. The other living eyewitnesses, Wade, later admitted that although he was in close proximity to the shooter, he could not, in any event, make an identification, because the shooter's face was almost entirely obscured by the hood of his sweatshirt. 
Wade further admitted that, although he never saw the shooter's face, he had no problem implicating Leonardo, because he knew that the shooter was a member of Solid Gold, and he did not particularly care which crew member went to prison for the murder. The third eyewitness, Ruben Negrin, who has since died, claimed that he was able to identify the shooter from his parking lot, approximately 180 feet away from the shooting, despite the fact that the shooter had a hood on his head. In addition, Negrin's version of events changed substantially over time. For example, Negrin failed to inform the police in his initial statement that he knew the shooter, a claim he only made after viewing an array containing a photograph of Leonardo, who was known to him as a neighborhood thug. Negrin also failed to tell the authorities, until days before the trial commenced a year and a half later, that the shooter had on one occasion threatened Negrin with a gun, and claimed that he killed people for a living. Camacho, Negrin and Wade all testified against Leonardo at his trial in 1996. There was no physical evidence connecting Leonardo to the murders. Leonardo was convicted of three counts of murder, plus the non-fatal shooting of Wade. He was sentenced to 25 years to life on each murder count, the sentences to run consecutively. As a result of evidence developed during the federal investigation into the murders of Ortega, Lavino and other homicides committed by the Solid Gold crew, including the recantations of Wade and Camacho, Leonardo, through counsel, made a motion to set aside the New York State convictions based on newly discovered evidence. The motion was granted. Leonardo's prior convictions were vacated, and he pleaded guilty in state court to the September 3, 1994 murders of Ortega and Lavino as an accessory. He was sentenced to 15 years to life in state prison. On December 13, 1994, Diaz, a young teenager, was shot and fatally wounded on Bathgate Avenue in the Bronx by Maldonado. In September 1994, Sedeno, an associate of members of Solid Gold, pled guilty to criminal possession of a weapon in the second degree, and was sentenced to three to six years of incarceration. At the time of his arrest, Sedeno ran a retail crack cocaine spot in the vicinity of Bathgate Avenue and 178th Street in the Bronx, and was involved in an ongoing turf war with Rodriguez. Rodriguez sold heroin on the same block as Sedeno. At the time, Rodriguez lived at 1993 Bathgate Avenue with his girlfriend Diaz. Sedeno had a close relationship with members of Solid Gold. In fact, Sedeno was the one who taught Ramon how to efficiently cook crack cocaine. Moreover, prior to Sedeno's arrest, members of Solid Gold provided Sedeno with the crack he sold on Bathgate Avenue. After Sedeno's arrest, Solid Gold essentially ran Sedeno's crack business at Bathgate Avenue for Sedeno. While Sedeno was serving his sentence, he and members of Solid Gold arranged for Rodriguez to be killed and for Solid Gold to continue selling crack at Sedeno's spot. Maldonado was recruited to do the murder because Sedeno admired the way in which he had killed Overman. Members of Solid Gold, Ramon, Omar and Padilla, traveled to Orleans Prison in upstate New York, where they met with Sedeno to discuss and plan the murder of Rodriguez and the arrangements to pay Maldonado $7,000 to commit the crime. The Flores brothers and Padilla also spoke frequently to Sedeno by phone in the days leading up to the Bathgate shootings, using the telephone of one of Sedeno's closest drug associates. On the day of the shootings, Maldonado proceeded on a bicycle towards Bathgate Avenue, he approached Rodriguez, who was standing in front of 1993 Bathgate Avenue. Diaz was in the vestibule of the building. Using a gun provided to him by Solid Gold, Maldonado shot both Rodriguez and Diaz numerous times. On January 1, 1995, about two weeks after she was shot, Diaz died of the gunshot wounds she had sustained. Rodriguez survived the shooting. On October 12, 1995, Maldonado was arrested for the murder of Rashim Washington. According to the presentence report prepared for this offense, on October 1, 1995, at approximately 2.15 a.m., Maldonado shot Rashim Washington several times in front of 1233 Boston Road, Bronx, New York, causing his death. He also attempted to cause the death of Terence Crawford, Tawin Crawford and Edlin Edwards, by shooting at them. On May 5, 1997, Maldonado was sentenced to 25 years as to life imprisonment for murder in the second degree, and 5 to 10 years as imprisonment for attempted murder in the second degree. As for Padilla, he would be in and out of jail up until the 2000s. He would be indicted and hit with 240 months. Guerrero would be indicted as well and hit with 25 years. But this about wraps it up for this one. And as always, stay low and thanks for watching.